Hello my schoolers, you are welcome to my school YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In today's video, we are moving to a different aspect of our topic by topic physics video lesson. So today the aspect that we'll be considering is astrophysics and under astrophysics, we shall be learning about satellites and rockets. So do not go anywhere, relax and we'll be right back. You are welcome back to my school YouTube channel. So like I said earlier on, we shall be learning about satellites and rockets. So before we begin with our lesson, let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson. So objective number one, identify the components of rockets and satellites. Two, describe the components, parts of rockets and satellites. And three, state the uses of rockets and satellites. So let's move to the next slide to begin with our lesson. So before we begin with the meaning of satellite, it is important for me to let you know that rockets and satellites are part of the very important and exciting technological advances of the modern world. Both rockets and satellites are mostly often linked to one another as rockets are used to lift or transport satellites to space. So what is a satellite? So a satellite is any object that moves around the Earth or any body in space. So some examples of satellites are moon. We have the weather satellites such as GOES. We have the communication satellite Venus ETC. Of course, Venus is a satellite because Venus, which is an example of planet, move around the sun. Okay, and we define the satellite as any object that moves around the Earth or anybody in space. Okay, so what are the types of satellites? So basically, there are two types of satellites, which are natural satellites and artificial satellites. So for natural satellites, as the name implies, okay, so natural satellites are the celestial bodies that orbit a planet or smaller body, which is called the primary, okay, e.g. the moon and the planet. Okay, so the moon orbits the earth, while the planet orbits the sun. Okay, and we have the artificial satellite. So artificial suggests man-made. Okay, so these satellites are actually made by man. Okay, so artificial satellites are the bodies that are placed into orbit by humans. Okay, they are the bodies that are placed into orbit by humans. And examples are GOES. So GOES is a weather satellite. We have the ANIC. So ANIC is a communication satellite. Then we have the GPX, it's a navigation satellite. And we have the Terrias, a scientific satellite. And we have the MISTA, a military satellite. They are all examples of artificial satellite. So let's move to the next slide. So on the next slide here, we are going to be discussing about the component parts okay, of a satellite. So as you can see on the screen, this is a typical example of a satellite. And we are going to be analyzing the different parts okay, and the role those different parts play. Okay? So the basic parts of a satellite and their function are one, we have the power. Okay? So electricity is needed for instruments and to enable the, uh, the spacecraft directional control. Okay, so the power is usually provided by solar arrays. Okay, but where um, a greater amount of power is needed, then nuclear generators are used. Okay, then two, we have communication. Okay, we have communication. So the satellite has to communicate with ground control. Okay, so directions and commands can be sent up and data okay, and data sent down. To provide radio contact, satellites have radio antennas, okay? They have radio antennas. So this is another plural word for antennas, okay? Then we have guidance, okay? So star trackers and gyroscopes help satellites align themselves in the right direction to acquire sources, okay? Then we have science. Satellites have scientific equipment on them, okay? Because most of the satellites that are... Uh, that are projected into space are actually for the purpose of scientific studies. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. So here we are going to be discussing the difference between artificial and natural satellites. Okay, and this is worth taking note of. So on one side we have the natural satellites, on the other side we have the artificial satellites. So now let's go through the difference. One, 
uh, the natural satellites are formed along with the body they orbit. Okay, they are formed with the body they orbit. For example, the moon is a satellite of the Earth. Okay, so both of them are formed. The moon is formed along with the Earth. Okay, why? Because the moon orbits the Earth. So both of them are formed at the same time. Okay, so one characteristic of the natural satellite is that they are formed along with the body they orbit. So the moon is formed along the Earth because the moon orbits the Earth. Okay, then under artificial satellite, artificial satellites are usually placed into orbit by humans. Okay, they are usually placed into orbit by humans. Then two, natural satellites can be very large, such as the moon. They can be very large, such as the moon. Then under artificial satellite, they can be very small, such as a CubeSat. Okay, then three, uh, natural satellites can have a wide variety of orbits, including circular, elliptical, and even retrograde orbits. Okay, why for artificial satellite, they usually have a circular orbit in the Earth's equatorial plane. Okay, then fourthly, okay, which is the last one, is that uh, the natural satellite can be used for a variety of purposes, such as studying the objects they orbit, providing navigation data or transmitting communication. While for the artificial satellites, they are usually used for telecommunication, weather forecasting, or scientific research. So these are the difference between artificial and natural satellites. So let's move to the next slide. So basically, we are going to be defining some terms that are associated with satellites and they are worth taking note of, such as parking orbit. Okay, so what do we mean by parking orbit? So a parking orbit is a low altitude orbit that is used to hold satellites in place while it is being prepared for its final orbit. Okay, so parking orbits are typically circular and have an altitude of a few hundred kilometers. Okay, then we also have geostationary satellite. Geostationary satellite. So, geostationary satellite is a satellite that orbits the Earth at an altitude of 35,786 kilometers. Okay, and this altitude is called geostationary bed, and it is the only altitude where a satellite can remain in a fixed position above the Earth. Okay, so geostationary satellites are used for a variety of purposes, such as telecommunication, weather forecasting, and navigation. So let's talk about period of revolution and speed of a satellite. So the period of revolution of a satellite is the time it takes to complete one orbit around the object it is orbiting. The time it takes for that satellite to complete, to complete one orbit around the object it is orbiting. Okay, so what do we mean by the speed of a satellite? So the speed of a satellite is the distance it travels in one orbit divided by the time it takes to complete that orbit. Okay, the distance the satellite travels in one orbit divided by the time it takes to complete that orbit is what we refer to as the speed of a satellite. So the period of a satellite and the speed of a satellite are connected by an equation. So let's move to the next slide so that we can see the equation. So they are connected by the following equation. V is equals to 2 pi r all over t. V is equals to 2 pi r all over t. Okay, where V is the speed of the satellite, okay, and it's always in meter per second, Y r is equals to distance between the satellite and the object it is orbiting. R is the distance between the satellite and the object it is orbiting. Okay, we can as well call it the radius of the orbit and it is in meter. Okay, y t is equals to period of revolution in seconds. Period of evolution in seconds. And here you must take note that for a geostationary satellite, okay, period of revolution is equals to 24 hours. So take note of that. So that 24 hours we now convert it to seconds. Okay, so let's discuss about uses of satellite. So below are some uses of satellite which include communication. Okay, satellites play a vital role in global communication network, enabling long distance transmission of data, voice, and videos. Then two, Earth observation. Earth observation satellites capture data about the Earth's surface, atmosphere, and ocean. Then three, navigation. Navigation satellites provide precise positioning information 
using global navigation satellite system gnss let's move to the next slide number four scientific research so satellites support various scientific endeavors from studying the earth's climate climate to exploring distant celestial bodies then five military and defense military satellites serve serve strategic and tactical purposes providing intelligence surveillance recognizance and secure communication the number six agriculture so farmers use satellite data for efficient crop management optimizing irrigation and assessing the health of agricultural feed then the last but not the least number seven which is environmental monitoring so satellites contribute to environmental monitoring by assessing pollution deforestation and changes in ecosystem so this is where we end the preview for today's video you can watch the complete video by clicking on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website there you have to subscribe to enjoy the complete video in the complete video we discuss about rocket the part of rocket and uses of rocket then we'll also solve some problem using the relationship between the period of evolution of a satellite and the speed of a satellite okay so i believe you enjoyed the preview of this video lesson if yes please do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next video